Hello friends, hope you're doing well. So I've had a lot of um, comments and questions from uh, students of mine and those of you that are watching from around the world asking me about the correct way to mix your carrageenan and size or methyl cellulose. If you've brought, bought kits from me, then you're probably working with methyl cellulose because that's what I tend to uh, give to people that are just using it for, for a hobby. It's cheaper, it's easy to mix, and it lasts really well, especially if you mix it with borax. Borax helps to suppress the microbes and the bacteria. Anyway, I'll show you how to mix it. The, uh, the easiest way I think to mix it is to use um, an old uh, two litre bottle. I'll show you in a sec how to measure it out, um, measure out the water, put it in the bottle, give it a good shake, and let that dissolve overnight or at least four hours, but it's better to leave it on over, overnight. Now anyway, I'll move the camera, I'll show you how I set it all up, show you how to mix it, and then you'll be good to go. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is set your electronic kitchen scales to zero. So what you do is you put your cup on, so I'm using a paper cup because it's nice and light, and you press the on button with the cup on it and that should now be set to zero. Hopefully you're keeping your methyl cellulose or your carrageenan in a nice air and watertight container. Now we're gonna spoon that out. So because we're only making one and a half liters and we're in a hard water region, Portsmouth's got very hard water, so that means it's got high calcium. We only wanna use five grams per liter so we're gonna use seven and a half grams in total. And it's always better to make a slightly thick mixture. So I'm gonna put eight grams in total so that we know we've got the seven and a half grams well covered. Okay, so I've got eight grams in there. And I'll explain what to do if your mix ends up being too thick. It's better to make a mix that's too thick than a mix that's too watery because you can always water down a thick mix, but it's much harder to thicken up a watery mix. Okay, so we've got our methyl cellulose or carrageenan measured out. So I'll put that to one side for a minute. And now we've got our empty two litre bottle and we've got our plastic jug. So I measure out in litres, so I'm gonna be using half a litre at a time to transfer it into this bottle and I'm gonna mark up the bottle so that we have half a litre, one litre and one and a half litres marked out. Now, why am I bothering to mark out the bottle, you're wondering? Okay, so the reason I'm marking it out, so I'm trying to do it so that you can see it. The reason we mark it out is so that next time you don't have to bother using the measuring jug. So we're gonna use the measuring jug to make three marks on here. So we've got 0.5 liters or 500 milliliters. So I'm just gonna put 0.5. Now we're gonna re repeat the process. So another half a liter. Trust me, there's method in the madness. I'm actually going to switch. I'm right handed, but I'm doing everything left handed so you can see it in the camera. But I'm now switching back to my right hand because I don't want to spill it everywhere. And that's a good point, actually. If, um, if you're a child watching this, make sure you get permission from mum and dad because they don't want to come home and have to clear up your mess. 
So make sure you're really careful and make sure you get permission first. So now we've got half a litre, one litre, and finally one and a half litres marked out. So that's three half a litres, making one and a half litres. Look, you're even getting a maths lesson. You'll be getting a science lesson as well in a minute. I mean, you need to think of this process of mixing your marbling liquid the same way that you would if you were following a recipe to make a cake. We need to be pedantic because a lot of the time when people get in touch with me and they're having trouble, it's because they haven't measured out their powder and their liquid properly. Okay, half a litre, litre, one and a half litres. Now, we can come back to our powder. And this is the bit where you wanna make a nice paper cone to be able to pour your powder into the bottle. Okay, if you haven't got a piece of paper, pause the video, go and grab a piece of paper, fold it in half. I'm using an A4 piece folded in half, so it's now A5 size. And then we're just gonna roll that into a cone or a funnel shape so that it will fit inside the aperture of your bottle. And now you can get your carrageenan or metal cellulose and pour that straight in. Make sure you've got it all in there. Now, you've probably watched other videos where they're telling you you need, you need to use hot water and that you need to boil it or that you need to whisk it into a bowl or you need to use a food blender and all that kind of stuff. But if you've got good quality methyl cellulose or carrageenan, you should be able to pour it straight in, put the lid on, make sure you've got the lid on nice and tight. Give it a good shake. And that's gonna to begin to dissolve. Now, if it's good quality, you can probably get away with leaving it for sort of five or six hours and then it should be dissolved. But the best thing to do is leave it overnight. So you, if you know that you're gonna be doing marbling, let's say at the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, make sure you do your mix on Friday or Thursday. And once you've got it mixed up, you can put it in the fridge and you can also add borax powder if you've got any of that. I'll talk to you about that in a minute. Okay, I've just come back to inspect. So it's been sat there for about half an hour, it's starting to dissolve nicely. What you might find is that as it settles, it might start to thicken up on the bottom of the bottle. So you wanna turn it on its side, give it a good shake, move it off the bottom, have a look at it. Yeah, it's still it's still coagulating, but that's fine. You see that it's got those lumps in it. That's perfectly normal. So don't panic if you're seeing that. Just come back to it every 10, 15 minutes, give it a shake, and you'll gradually start to see it dissolving. And like I said, if you give yourself plenty of time, that won't be an issue. How are you doing? Right, hopefully you've got to this stage without making a huge mess. I mean, if you're a kid and you have made a mess and your parent's about to come home from work, then um, pull your finger out, clean the mess up. They don't want to be dealing with that. So you remember I made a big deal of marking these out. Now the reason I've, I've done that, hopefully you can see them a bit more clearly now. So we've got half liter, one and a half liters, you probably won't want to be making up more than that at the time if you're a hobbyist and you're just doing it at the weekends. Because what we can do, what we can add to it, to make it last longer so you don't have to keep mixing it up every weekend, is you can just add a little bit of borax powder. So borax powder, pretty easy to get hold of. Most people will be actually be able to get it on Amazon or eBay. 
I mean, if you've got kids and grandchildren and you've made slime with them, then you've probably got some hanging around at home anyway. So you just need a teaspoon of that. Should have made my cone, shouldn't I? Gonna make a mess now. It's in. So now that it's started to dissolve the methyl cellulose, add your borax, give that a good shake. And that's going to help suppress bacterial growth. And because we've got these marks on here, it means that you don't have to bother measuring out with the jug each time. You can just refill straight from the tap. Now, if you find that you're going to want to make more than one and a half litres, you, you make it up. You're one and a half litres. You either make up another bottle with the, with, with the marks on so that you've got two bottles marked up or you simply make up one and a half litres, empty that into your container, and then you think, well, actually I need two litres, then you've only got to make up half a litre, or if you want two and a half litres, so on and so forth. I think you can figure it out from there, can't you? Hello, friends, welcome back. So, it's now tomorrow. Right, today for me, tomorrow from the perspective of where we were this yesterday, although it's only going to be seconds if you've continued watching it and you've put up with all the uh, YouTube ads. Thank you for that, by the way. Thank you for sticking around. It's, um, it's fully dissolved as far as I can see. So every now and again, see there's just a slight, sometimes in the methyl cellulose or the carrageenan you get slight impurities, you're probably not going to be able to see it. Um, and the material clumps together and it won't fully break down no matter how much you shake it or how much you stir it. But don't worry about that. When we pour the liquid into the tray, if there are any undissolved uh, uh, lumps, you can just scoop them out of the spoon. Or sometimes if you just squeeze them with your um, thumb, they'll, they'll dissolve and then eventually they'll break down. So I'm going to zoom the camera in so you can get a good look. Of what's going on and then we're going to talk about viscosity so that we can make the liquid the viscosity that you need depending on the type of work that you're trying to produce whether it's figurative work or the more kind of abstract marbling work sometimes you want it really watery so that the that you get a lot of movement in the paint sometimes you want it a bit thicker so that when you're doing figurative work you can do nice close control and uh, everything turns out exactly how you want it, it doesn't run away from you Okay, so if you've bought kits off of me, this you're going to be familiar with this tray. This is an A4 paper tray, and that's why we've mixed one and a half litres, because we know that's the correct amount for this tray. You can do up to two litres, but it might be a little bit over full. So now we're just going to pour it in. Okay, I can already see there's one little un undissolved, it's like a little jellyfish, I'm sort of chasing around, undissolved lump. But if it stays on the bottom, it's not a problem. It's not going to interfere. So if it just stays on the bottom, I'll leave that alone. Now, ideally, when you pour it out, because there's going to be a small amount of bubbles, you just leave it for half an hour to settle and all of those bubbles will surface and disappear. Okay, once you've removed any little lumps or impurities that you find, you can now test the viscosity. Now, the way I do it, so if, you, if you're working with, with combs and tools, you'll probably be, um, you've probably watched videos or you're familiar with how we apply the paint and then use the, the combs to make the patterns. If you're not familiar with that, Watch my next video on how to work with uh, acrylics with paper marbling and um, you'll see how that's done. But in this video, I just want to talk about the viscosity. This is for people that are familiar with marbling, but they're struggling with making the uh, methyl cellulose or carrageen size. So I'm just going to show you how we check that it's So if you've bought kits off me, then you're probably familiar with the Pabeo marbling inks. 
these work really well on paper and wood. And I'm going to do another video on how to actually use those. This video is more about making the actual liquid and checking that it's working properly. So I like to use these plastic, these are plastic hair pin, hair pins, and I just put the, the paint on drop by drop. And depending on how quickly it dissipates, gives me a clue as to how thick or how dense the liquid is. And the only way to really see any contrast with these inks, because they're so powerful, is you have to put on quite a bit, and then you need to put on a contrasting colour. So now I'm going to put some blue on. And I'm just touching it on the surface because I'm really looking to see how quickly it expands. Okay, so hopefully now that's picking up on the camera. I'm going to do some concentric circles so that the colour shows up better. So I'm going to alternate between the red and the blue. Now with a clean hairpin, I'm just going to start drawing some lines. I'm just going to wait for it to expand a little bit more. It's still going. Okay, and now I'm just going to pull in slowly from one edge, just breaking the surface tension, pulling into the middle. Then I'm going to do the same on the opposite side and then down and then up from the bottom. Okay, so this is pretty good. There's not really any spring back, so I know that this viscosity is good. It's The water is thick enough that we can do this kind of figurative work. I'm pulling it through and it's staying where I want it to. It's not running away from me. Now, if you want to do comb work and you want a thinner liquid, so that you can pull the comb through, you might want to add a bit of water and water it down. And so what I really encourage people to do is write down in their journals the mix. So we know that we were using five grams per litre. And so we made one and a half litres, so we used seven and a half grams, and I added a little bit more. So we had eight grams in total for that one and a half litres. Now, if it's a little bit thick, once you've cleaned off the tray with a piece of plain paper, you can then add water to it, stir in the water and then test it again. Now I'm gonna test it to see if it's gonna work well with the comb. So I'm gonna add a little bit more color. And the more colour I add, the deeper in tone it's becoming. So hopefully it's showing up better on the camera. Now these paints do come with a dropper. Now, if you want to add loads of colour, you can drop it on drop by drop. But I'm going to explain more about that in a different video when we're, I'm talking to you about how to use the acrylics. I really just want to focus on the viscosity making the liquid in this one. Okay, so now I've got plenty of colour on there and you should be able to see it. With my bigger mixing tool, or all, I'm gonna go up and down, and then left and right. Okay, so the viscosity is just about right. It could be a little bit thinner, a little bit more watery, so that it swims around a little bit more, so it's staying very stiff. So I think when I use the comb, it's gonna be okay, but it might drag a little bit too much of the color. Do you know that's all right? Spot on. That's perfect, actually. So there you go. So this viscosity works well for doing the figurative work. 
So making flowers and hearts, but it's also great for doing the marbling work as well if you're, doing, if you're using the comb. But I'm gonna talk more about how to use the acrylics in a different video. This was really just to show you how to get the mix right and test the viscosity. Okay, thank you for watching guys. So I hope you found that useful. So this video is really about showing you how to mix your methyl cellulose or carrageenan size. If you're, if you're using carrageenan, then you might find there's slightly different ratios. You might need to use a little bit more because methyl cellulose thickens up really nicely. So carrageenan, you might need to use a little bit more. So I'll put it in the show notes, the ratios that I use. So I use five grams of methyl cellulose per litre and with carrageenan, I use seven grams per litre. And we know that that mix is the correct viscosity for doing figurative work and for doing the combed work. And then in the next video, I'm gonna be talking more about how we use the acrylics to create the kind of effects that we're looking for. Um, I really work with Pabea because I find that they, um, they work nicely with paper and with um, fabric. And they work on wood as well, but the difference with wood is you have to treat it more. But we'll talk, talk more about that in the next video. Thanks, guys.